Welcome back and this is the first in a series of videos looking at aromatic chemistry. In this pack we're going to be looking just at the benzene ring and later on we're going to be also looking at phenol. So you're going to need your notes and a pen. So benzene is what's called a hydrocarbon and that's important because it means it contains carbon and hydrogen only and that word only is very important. Um, it's also highly carcinogenic and it's obviously therefore banned um, by use in schools and colleges. So we can't experiment with that, but we can use some benzene derivatives like methoxybenzene and methylbenzene. And you're going to do those in a little practical later on. The first thing we're going to look at, though, is the structure of benzene. Now, the formula was very quickly established as being C6H6, but the structure of benzene was a lot more difficult to pin down. So in the 1860s, a German chemist called Kekul had a dream. And in that dream, or at least he said he had a dream, and in that dream, he saw a snake eating its tail. And that gave him the idea for the ring structure of benzene with three double bonds alternating with three single bonds. So what he had was this structure. Generally speaking, we always do the skeletal formula for benzene. So I've got my six carbons in a ring and then I have my alternating single and double bonds. So I've got double, single, double, single, double, single. And you'll quite often see them drawn like that, certainly in some of the older textbooks. However, there is very quickly a problem with this structure of benzene. And that was um, firstly noticed in its reactions with hydrogen. It didn't react in the way um, a compound with three electron rich double bonds should react. So when we take something like cyclohexene and react it with hydrogen to make cyclohexane, that releases 120 kilojoules of energy per mole um, of cyclohexene. So you'd expect with three double bonds, as it would be in benzene, you would get three times that amount. So you should get minus 360 kilojoules of energy being released per mole. Actually, you only got 206 kilojoules of energy. So somehow there's been some energy missing. Well, you should know from thermodynamics that you can't have energy missing. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. So that energy has got to have gone somewhere. So somehow we have to account for the extra 154 kilojoules of energy. So this, along with several other pieces of uh, evidence, made scientists propose a slightly different structure for benzene. So instead of having these alternating single and double bonds, they proposed instead that you have a ring of delocalized electrons. And we usually show it like that, with the delocalized ring in the middle. So here you can see my model of benzene. And you should be able to see here, I've got these grey bonds, which these are representing the sigma bonds between the carbon atoms. And then you have this entire ring of delocalized electrons. This is a pi bonded system. It's like a pi bond, but instead of being localized between two individual carbon atoms, it's spread out over all six of the carbon atoms. And this makes this ring much more stable than you would expect it to be. So because of the delocalization of these 6p electrons, the structure is much more stable than you would expect so you need more energy to break the bonds up so that's where the missing 154 kilojoules of energy has gone it's gone to disrupting that nice stable ring structure and it makes benzene a very stable compound another piece of very important information came from x-ray diffraction now x-ray diffraction can measure the bond lengths now, if you had a Kekul structure, and if you remember the Kekul structure is this alternating single and double bond structure, like that. So you'd expect to see these alternating single and double bonds. You'd expect the double bonds to be shorter than the single bonds. So you'd have a short bond followed by a long bond, short, long, short, long. And you'd also expect this to be a non-planar structure. Now, when they actually measured the X-ray diffraction, they found that all the bond lengths were the same and they were approximately 140 pimptometers. Now that was longer than a typical double bond but shorter than a typical single bond and again it was a planar molecule. 
The more modern images we've provided for you on page four show the symmetry of the molecule quite nicely. You can see there that the bond lengths between the areas of electron density are all the same. It's a nice symmetrical molecule. And this is another piece of evidence that shows that we have this delocalized ring of electrons. So we have this delocalization above and below the plane of the molecule, resulting in this pi bonded system. So benzene is much more stable than expected because the 6p electrons are delocalized over the ring. And this has an enormous impact on its reactivity. It doesn't react as you would expect a normal unsaturated compound to react. So on page six, we've got an exam practice question for you to have a go at. So I'd like you to pause the video at this point and just have a go at that question. So the first bit of the question caught a few students out because they misunderstood what was meant by structural feature. So the structural feature of this, it's showing that it's got alternating single and double bonds. Well, we know that's not correct because all the carbon to carbon bonds are the same length. So that's the part of the structure which is not correct. It's not a good, um, accurate portrayal of the actual compound. So if it releases 118 kilojoules of energy to turn one double bond or add hydrogen across one double bond to make it into a single bond, then to turn structure X into cyclohexane, well, we'd have three times this because you've got three double bonds. So it would be three times this value. So the estimated value for the theoretical conversion of X into cyclohexane would be three times 118, so that'd be minus uh, 354. Now we know it's less than that, it releases less energy because we've actually got this delocalized ring of electrons. Remember, these 6p electrons are delocalized and it takes energy to disrupt that delocalization. Now, this last part of the question did confuse a lot of people, so you need to be clear about what they're asking you to do. So it's showing the relative enthalpies of the structures of benzene structure X and cyclohexane. So we know, for example, that benzene to cyclohexane, it's exothermic, so that means that cyclohexane is more stable, has a lower enthalpy than the benzene structure. So we're going to put that one on first. So I'm gonna draw a line to represent my cyclohexane. Numbers don't really matter, but there's my cyclohexane. And I know, if I take my next line up, that benzene, which is this structure, well, I know that that enthalpy change there is going to be minus 205. And I know that the enthalpy change of this weird X thing, X, which is this Kekur structure, that theoretically the difference between those two would be minus 354. So what I'm doing is this number here. So I'm going to actually show my working in a little bit more detail. You don't need to show what's working, you do this on your calculator. But I know that that change there from there to there is minus 205. And I know that, let's just extend that line a bit. I know that that change there will be minus 354. Therefore, I can work out what that change is there. And that's the only change they've actually asked you for. So that's the important one. Don't forget the arrow is pointing down. And it's minus 149 kilojoules per mole. In other words, my benzene structure is more stable than structure X, the KQ structure by 149 kilojoules per mole of energy. That's the amount of energy it would need to disrupt that delocalized ring of electrons. So this helps us to understand the structure of benzene, that it is more stable than expected, so it does not show the typical reactions of an alkene. It's a functional group all on its own, and it has its own unique chemistry. And we're going to study that a little bit later on. So in this last section, we're going to look at naming aromatics.
Now, students get very nervous and het up about naming aromatics, but you really don't need to worry about it. There are a few you're going to just have to learn, I'm afraid, but most of the others you can work out. And because they're not as easy to name as straightforward, straight chained compounds uh, like you studied in the first year, there's a lot of leniency given in the naming. So as long as you get roughly the right name and you certainly get the right numbers, you will usually get the mark. So the first one you need to know about that you have to learn is phenol. Now we're going to study phenol a little bit later on in this topic. And again, like benzene, it is a functional group all on its own. It doesn't show the typical reactions of an alcohol. Um, so it has its own special functional group. So that one's phenol with the OH group coming off of the ring. Some aromatics where they're derived from phenol keep the phenol root. For example, this compound here is called phenylamine. This is an amine functional group. You studied these, the NH2 with the benzene ring attached to it, but this is called phenylamine. Most of the others you can name using your IPAC nomenclature, just like you did at lower sixth. So I'd like you to pause the video at this point and have a go at naming these compounds. Okay, so we're going to go through them one by one. Most of them are very straightforward. So first one, you've got a chlorine attached to the benzene ring. There's only one substitute, so this is simply chlorobenzene. Chlorobenzene. The second group one here, B, I've got an NO2 group. This is what's called a nitro group. Again, it's the only substitute and it's attached to the ring. So this would be nitrobenzene. C here, you've got an R group on the benzene ring. This time it's methyl. So unsurprisingly, this becomes methylbenzene. If that had two carbons on it, it would be ethyl benzene and so on. D and E, I'll put there just to catch you out a little bit because those are the ones you've got to learn, but we've come across those before. So this is phenylamine and this is phenol. And as I said, there are some you are going to have to just learn. F might catch you out a bit because this is an aldehyde functional group. So F is actually called benzaldehyde. OK, again, it's one you possibly might need to learn. Now, when you've got more than one substitute on the ring, the ring needs to be numbered. So because this up here is a carboxylic acid functional group and that will take priority, that becomes carbon number one, that becomes carbon number two, and this becomes carbon number three. Notice we always number them for the smallest possible numbers. So this is not position um, five, it's position three. So this becomes 3-chlorobenzoic acid. And benzoic acid is probably one you're going to want to add to your list of ones you're going to have to learn because it's a benzene ring with just one carboxylic acid functional group. So that's benzoic acid. H is quite straightforward. We've got three nitro groups are on our benzene ring uh, and we've got this methyl group here. So this is 2, 4, 6, tri, nitro, methyl, benzene. 2, 4, 6, tri, nitro, methyl, benzene. Now, I is definitely going to catch you out. I is a horrible one, and it just illustrates how difficult it can be to name aromatic compounds. Now, you would not get anything that nasty in the exam. You might get ones like J or H or even G, but you're not going to get to, to name something as nasty as I. Now, if they did ask you to name something like I, they would also give you a long list of alternative names. But technically, this is called 1-phenyl because this is actually counting as a substitute, ethan, one, ol, because the branch can count it as an ethanol, 
but the OH group on the first carbon attached to the benzene ring. I told you it's particularly nasty to name this one. Um, so I really wouldn't worry about that one. Okay, you're unlikely to get anything that nasty in the exam. J is a little bit more straightforward because, but the trick is here to recognize that without the chlorine there, that is phenylamine. So with the chlorine there, it just becomes 4 chloro phenyl amine. And that is how we name aromatics. So that was looking at the basic structure of benzene and how to name benzene and phenol compounds. In the next videos, we're going to be looking at the reactions of benzene and also the mechanisms for benzene.